Hey, Paul, I've been looking forward to this uh, conversation for months now, I think. We've had it booked in, but um, hey, thanks so much for uh, coming on the podcast today. Well, Ben, it's funny you say that because I've been looking forward to it as well. It's it's, <laughs> it's really great to, to be with you. And by the way, when, when when I say with you, I'm also aware of the fact that that also includes you who are listening. So thank you very much for taking time out of your day. Uh, to be here for this as well but especially Ben thank you for the invitation yeah no, thank you um, and before we get into the meaty stuff I'd like to know what you get up to when you're not working or whether you know working in B1G1 or talking with other accountants <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad you didn't send me the questions beforehand right because I'd have made something <laughs> up uh, so now uh, <laughs> so no, my uh, you know I think we we all need a place where we can think about things and mm. you know and some of us would meditate, but I've got to say I find that really challenging to do. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's why I run every morning. Um, so um, and that from, and sometimes in the evening as well. And uh, that for me is um, you know uh, j- just that time where I, I I don't know how that works, right? But you you're running along and all of a sudden you go oh. And mm. somehow or other, you, you <laughs> think about things quite differently when you're in that space. And that's the clue, right? Because, you know, uh, I mean, in accounting firms, what do they do? Sometimes they have uh, these things called retreats, which you and I wish they called forwards. But anyway, so they have retreats. And the, the great thing about the retreat is they get in a different place, right? That's the great thing about it. And yep. when you're in that different place, or indeed a space that you create specially in the firm for that, you know, in the, in the, in the place for that, uh, in your location for that, Jeff, that's when the extraordinary things start to happen. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's what I do. Awesome. <laughs> oh, and then at the weekend, I also I also add on tennis as well. So I uh-huh. always in uh, a couple of games uh, on on the weekend. So it's good. Yeah, wonderful. Good to keep active as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, exactly. Because associated with that, by the way, since <laughs> since we've got mostly accountants uh, uh, on online today. Um, sometimes that means that their calculators are close by. So here's, <laughs> oh, so here's a little exercise, right? So so people say, are you serious, Paul? You actually run, you know, every morning you do the 5K and everything else. Yes, and I time it and I got my PB a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, awesome. So they say, but hang on, you, you, you're getting on. Right? <laughs> <I can't laughs> that, right? So I decided last year uh, in November uh, to... Uh, to stop counting birthdays and uh, <laughs> even better to count days. And so I said to my son, who's he, he like codes things. I said, could you code me up something, you know? And, uh, and you know, you got to take into account uh, leap years and all that kind of stuff. And you got to remember that the year 2000 wasn't one, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And uh, Ms. Amy was was close by and she said, there's probably an app for that. And there is. <laughs> surprisingly and it's called days since and i'm i'm sure it was made for people who are trying to get off alcohol or something i'm sure it was made <laughs> for you could have a lot of things anyway so i'm proud to tell you ben uh, it's right on my lock screen here today is uh, day number 28800 so everybody's now i know you're doing you put that number and divide it by 365 and say oh my god and so ah <laughs> uh, no we we yeah no Thanks again for for sharing at least one of those days with our audience and and me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Very good. All righty. Well, hey, you are probably one of the most prolific people I know in the accounting industry, Uh, but would you like to share your background uh, for the people who may not know who you are, who are listening, um, or even for those who do that, you know, might hear something new for the first time? Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, And um uh, you know, there's 28,000 days of it, so we could take the entire, <laughs> entire podcast, but no, we'll, we'll shorten it down. Uh, and it's amazing. Some people think that I'm actually an accountant, right? And and, and no, I'm not. And and uh, I, I think that's interesting because uh, another friend of mine said uh, perspective, which we all need, right? Perspective mm-hmm. is looking at a place where you are not. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at a place from you know uh, looking at things from a place where you are not and the interesting thing is you can never be at a place where you are not right so someone quote unquote outside can look in and see things and go wow oh, this is really weird right mm-hmm. and so that journey began for me uh, way way back 
in 1974, probably before wow. many people here were uh, were born. Um, well, actually, just a couple of years before that, and I, I had the privilege of being one of the first 10 in Hewlett Packard in Australia. Mm. And uh, it was when Hewlett Packard was getting into computing and stuff like that. And I had a call from this guy, and he said, uh, his name is Brian Capon, actually. And, and he said, um, can these, the, my clients are using a lot of this Hewlett Packard stuff. Uh, can it do what an accountant does? And I said, well, Brian, the answer to that is probably yes. But I have to be honest and tell you, I have no idea what an accountant does, but, not, but I'd love you to tell me. So, you know, I go down and he says, you know, debits are on the left, credits on the right, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And and uh, so I, I said, well, I think we can do something with that. Um, but I'll have to write some software uh, in order to do it. So I then went back to the then managing director of uh, of HP, who said that every day I was in the office, I aged him. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine that. Said, based on a study that I've just done of accountants in Mornington, uh, Morningstar, Mornington, I think it was, yeah, Mornington Peninsula. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a huge opportunity in the accounting space. And, mm. you know, I'd like to have some time to write this accounting thing. And then, so I wrote that, Capon bought it, uh, and, which was nice. And then um, I, I gave the software to a friend of mine who was having a lot of struggles mm. Uh, and so together we created uh, one of Australia's first computer companies. And Ben, I found out six weeks ago that I'm actually in the Australian Society, uh, Australian Computer Society Museum in Sydney. Seriously, I'm in, I'm in that museum, which I'm not here. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good place to be, but anyway, I'm there. Wow. Um, and so yeah. we grew that uh, to uh, you know 23 million, I, I think, in the in the 80s, in the in the late 80s. And then I realized that I, I could be doing much more and, and speaking and, and sharing some things. So mm. um, so that was when that all started for me. And as you know, we created this thing called the Accountants Bootcamp. And, mm. you know, 17,700 firms came through, or people, I should say, came through that. And, mm. and every single one of them said it changed their life. And, and of course, that was you know, so interesting, getting back to that comment about perspective. Because one of the things I could never understand, because I'd, I'd never learned it, was this whole thing about you have to you 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 have to have these things called timesheets. I could I could never understand that, because I I'd, I'd never gone through anything that had that. If you see what I mean, I'd never been yeah. told well, this is the way you do things, and I genuinely could not understand why 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 people did that, and then. As you know, uh, in 1996, I, I met my good friend, Ron, Ron Baker, when mm. I was doing a program for the Californian CPAs. And, and Ron told me that his mission was to be buried uh, with a sign on, on uh, the uh, on his thing, which, which, which uh, on his tombstone, which said, we buried the billable hour. And so, <laughs> you know, I have been you know, working at that ever since. And uh, wow. the comes out uh, not not that long from now. I think it's the latest date is December this year, and it's called Times Up, and uh, and it you know yes it focuses on that, but it goes a lot further into thinking about new models uh, for uh, the accounting firm because you know the model the model by, by, by which we build businesses is a crucial part right, mm -hmm. and that's why. You know, things like vision and all those sorts of things are really important uh, in this. So there you go, potted history. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, um, I think we'll, we'll talk about the the book Time's Up um, uh, shortly, but I'd love to sort of revisit one you wrote almost 20 years ago now with Ron uh, in 2003 called Firm of the Future. Yeah. Mm. So uh, how, how would you suggest the accounting profession as a whole, like in, in general, have implemented the strategies that you and Ron described in the book 20 years ago oh well, i think more and more um yep. now there was a study actually done in the united kingdom um which which staggered me and um you know so i i i, I here's what the study said okay mm. the study said and it was done by a county web or, or somebody like that in the united kingdom and it said we have discovered that 68 percent of accounting firms uh no longer use time-based billing Wow. And, 
Yeah, exactly. That was my, my response. I'm like, whoa, really? If if you would have said it was eighteen percent, I'd have believed it. But their number, <laughs> their number is uh, 60, 68. and I think they, the, you know, how many people in the survey? I don't know, but but that was the number they came up with, and and certainly, as you know, more and more you see uh, you you see that happening. You know, you you see people moving to fixed price. They, um, and I was thinking about this when I when I knew I'd be talking with you. I thought we're probably <laughs> going to get into this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course, because it is such a fascinating thing because people just uh, just hang on to it. Um, mm. and, and I've I've uh, I was thinking about it actually the, the, this morning. Um, and you know you know how one of the themes of the past three years. Um, globally has been, you know, conspiracy theorists and mm. all of that thing, and, and how if you're not one of them, you can't you can't talk with them just in exactly the same way that they can't talk to you because there's this, you know, this incredible uh, thing, uh, mm. this incredible gulf. And um, so <laughs> I now I I I when when someone wants to. Uh, and I, I worry that I that I do this, but when someone wants to debate it, I, I, I say, well, it, it's actually not debatable. So I'm not, I'm not <laughs> it's not. And here's the reason why. Because mm. the, the more you give credence to it being worth debating, the more people actually stick with it. Do, do, yeah. do you see what I mean? So, yep. yeah, <clears throat> that may not be the best way of dealing with things, but that's how I do it. <laughs> yeah, I see. And... And you know, I um I had the beautiful chance of a clean slate when I started Inspire um, in in 2013, uh, where we we didn't have any rules. It was just me and and a laptop, literally, and a, and a printer. <laughs> I needed to print out reports at that stage, um, and and I could kind of do what I wanted, uh, yeah, timesheets or not, and. Um, and you know, it took a while for us to get the the no timesheets and working out our pricing. Um, it took years to to get that right, but. If I think about, let's say, a, a 5, 10, 15-year-old accounting firm who has been doing timesheets since their beginning, what are your suggestions on how they start to transition or, or what's the first steps people need to take to, um, to, to get to burying the timesheets? Well, it's it's very it's interesting you say that because uh, or you asked that question because um, about this time last week I mm. I was talking with someone who uh, is going through that process right mm. and um, what they <laughs> what they ended up saying was very quickly actually was was this uh, she says well there's not a process is there and I said well what do you mean <laughs> and, mm. and it's it, it just a mindset the moment yep. the moment you flip that mindset um you you just go okay so let's do it mm. and and let's just see you know what happens and there's all sorts of places you can go to now you know all sorts of uh websites we can go you know here's how you make the transition and all that kind of stuff but fundamentally fundamentally it gets back to a mindset which says uh, you know, essentially, this is this is not a, not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Um, in, in fact, uh, uh, later uh, in the week, last week, I had um, a uh, one of a couple of meetings with a lady called Karen Finch. Karen is interesting because she works with lawyers, mm -hmm. and she very specifically works with lawyers who get this don't keep time sheets mm -hmm. now if you're if you're an accountant and you just realize that you 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 would go oh hang on how they don't know how long the how long the court case is going to be they don't know what the judge is going to say they don't know any of that stuff right they yeah. don't know any of it yeah. so how then can they do the sort of fixed price or value price thing and the answer is easily once they shift the mindset <laughs> and it and it is that mindset. And, and she said, the thing that shifted the mindset for me, she said, was freedom. And, and I said, mm -hmm. what, what do you mean freedom? And she said, 
freedom from the tyranny of having to account for every six minutes. Yeah, and then, be horrible. Then she told me her, her personal story uh, about how she came to that, part of which was, uh, you know, her dad was an entrepreneur and got sued by a, a, a large company for something and then got a lawyer involved. And she told me about sitting at the kitchen table when her mom said, oh, my God, we've got another bill, but we're so vested in this now that we have to keep going. And that ended up in her parents losing their house and all that kind of stuff. And then she decided, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a solicitor. So she goes to the law for, uh, to university. She qualifies. She said, I'll always remember my first job interview. And I said, oh, tell me about that. And she said, well, the, uh, the principal said, this is how you do it. Said, what you do is you think about a client. You just think about a client. Right? You just think. And even if that takes one minute, what you do is you bill six. Because <laughs> yeah, the computer program doesn't yeah. have enough. And, and and here's the interesting point. Here's the interesting point. Because it was her first job, she she went along with that. And then she told me the story that two years later, her now husband, who was their boyfriend, mm -hmm. uh, said to her, Karen, and, and I want everybody listening to understand the depth of this point. She said, he, he said to her, Karen, you are losing your soul. Wow. Yep. Just just pause and think about that for a minute. Right? Yep. And you know, there are all sorts of other things on that where hmm. we know from studies that are done by um, you know, independent people. The one that I, I know I mentioned to you a while back was one done by Beyond Blue, where they looked at, hmm. you know, the, the 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 number of people that were coming to them with mental health issues and they would they 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 traced where that was coming from. Hmm. And it was the big increase was in so-called professional uh, service firms, and uh, you know, and they, and they trace that to this whole thing about the six-minute, you know. And so, at mm. one point, someone said, "Someone said, we've got to stop doing this because we we have to realize that what we're doing." And I know this sounds like, oh, uh, you know, Paul going over the top and all of that kind of stuff. But mm. if you think about it, there's there's the documented reason for it. So what uh, what they said was, because you've got to realize this is seriously harming people. And, yeah. you know, and I think one of the things that we we have realized through through the pandemic uh, in particular is this this is where we're moving too, I think, is an understanding that the business is not about transactions. It's mm -hmm. not about transactions. It's about humanity. That's mm -hmm. what it's actually about, right? It's about relationships. And so one of the things we talk about in, in the new book, for example, is you know how you move from, from monetizing the transaction to monetizing the relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and if you think about that really deeply, really deeply, then, then what you what you're setting out to do is you you know we used to, we used to say man in the old days you say you know you're moving from from reporting on history to actually helping people create history. Mm. And that's still the truth, and and I and I love what uh, what um, this guy um, uh, Fred Reichelt says about that. He wrote a book last year. It was called Winning on Purpose, and some of you. Uh, some of us would know who Mr. Reichelt is. He's a uh, he's a founder of Bain and Company. So think, you know, the McKinsey kind of mm. stuff. And in 1966, 1996, I beg your pardon, he, he wrote a book called The Loyalty Effect, which is the first time anyone was was looking at the relationship between loyalty and business growth. Mm. And he, uh, this new book, which is called Winning on Purpose, he wrote because he went to the doctor. And uh, the doc said, for his annual checkup, this is last year. And the doc said, Fred, I need to remind you that you have a limited time on this planet. Wow. <laughs> so I mean, the, the doc probably needed a better bedside manner. However, <laughs> but, but what Mr. Reichel did in, in, in 2002, he's the developer of Net Promoter Score. He was the guy mm -hmm. who did Net Promoter Score. And he decided to make that open source. And after the doc said that to him, he, he realized, hang on, some people aren't doing it the right way. So I, I need to write an epic, if you will, that gets people 
on the right way. And he does, and it's called Winning on Purpose. And yep. Fred is a really, really nice guy. He's a super duper guy. Um, he, he's approaching my 28,000. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, uh, and, and, but he's a nice guy. But there's one point where really early on in the book, where he, so he's, what I'm saying is he's not an in, the face, in your face guy, right? He's anything mm. but that. Mm. Um, but there's one point where he is kind of in your face and, and he says, since the book is called Winning on Purpose, he says, um, you know, what we, what we need to understand, he said this, what, what we're all here to do is enrich lives. Mm. And he said, frankly, if you're not in business to enrich lives, the lives of the people that you serve, mm. then I don't think you deserve to be in business. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's really that serious right but but at the same time that freeing that that's what you're doing and that knowledge that you're you know you're helping people you know create not just tell but people create so much better better stories for them and and you you realize that there's you know, it's not about this present moment. It's it's it, 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 it's about you leaving, you know, one heck of a great legacy yeah. where you're changing up the story for the people that you're privileged to serve. Yeah, yep. No, that's fantastic. And it, and it'd be doing a disservice to Bill by the six-minute unit for that. Uh, I think so. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, mm. but, but, so I mentioned lawyers before, you know, and if lawyers can do it, yeah, yeah. But there's another profession that, that we talk about in the book, and, and believe it or not, that's doctors. Ah, yes, because they yeah. That's yep. doctors, because you would think, well, isn't the doctor all about, you know, me making an appointment and him going, you know, put the thermometer in and you need to take some of these? Hmm. Well, a number of doctors have realized that the oath they took was to help people be healthy, basically. Yes. That's the yep. oath they took. And they realize that the 15 minute appointment is not doing that. It's not. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so what if we realize that, that, you know, all the things we've been taught about writing and everything else, what if there was a better way? Mm -hmm. And what if there was a way where we could create that ongoing relationship with our clients or members now, as opposed to patients, mm -hmm. um, and what what if we were just there for them? What if we were? Yeah. Right? And there's now six thousand medicos um, in 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 the US are doing that. So again, if that's mm. possible for, for medicos, then it has to be possible for us in the accounting space. Yep. And I, and I think actually giving those examples of other industries doing it um, is quite helpful for people who might be challenged by you know the let it letting go. Um, I'm actually really intrigued. How does a lawyer, like a litigation lawyer, do it? Because you know, you you may have a, a case that goes for let's say, you know, months or literally years. So, how, do you have any um, insight into what they do? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, and and, and you know, surprisingly enough, because I asked the same question, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there's one very large firm which I which I won't name, but it's mm -hmm. it's. Melbourne and it begins with M. That gives you a bit of a clue. Yes, I um, think I'm, and, I think I'm um, one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I asked that question. I said, like, you know, like really on in the relationship, I asked, you know, well, how can you do that? How can yeah. You do that? <laughs> and here's the amazing answer. The amazing answer is we serve them by avoiding litigation. Ah. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? It is, yeah. I'm just trying. <laughs> it's interesting, but I'm still uh, still trying to work it out. Um, mm. no, I guess it because we all know. I mean, if you if you think about that, we all know the way litigation goes, right? We're yeah. all sort of up on it. I'm going to beat the other guy, you know, and all that kind of stuff, right? But we all know typically where that ends up, mm. and it doesn't need to do that. It yeah. Doesn't. Now, when it does. If it does, they they have processes that cater for that. Yeah. Uh, but but fundamentally, um, that's what they're about. Ima imagine yep. imagine a lawyer saying, "Well, my job is to help you avoid litigation." Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 
But hey, don't you make money from the <laughs> Yeah. So we actually serve you best, both, you know, both both in 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 in, in monetary terms and in you know yeah. terms yeah. by getting you out of that loop. Yeah, the, the health benefits of avoiding months or years of that hanging over your head. Or it's like, you know, consider that uh, for, for an accounting firm. Mm. So, you know, a person comes in at the, at the end of the year with their shoebox of you know, receipts and things, and you say, this is a mess. <laughs> it's a mess, right? Yeah. What, how could you possibly run the... In fact, look at the numbers. You, you know, you look, at, look at what happened. Um, as opposed to, you know, starting the year by saying, this is what I'm going to do. And mm. we're going to have a relationship where, you know, da, 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 and, and it, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a very different, um, that, by the way, that, that's interesting because it's the first time you maybe realize that there is a very interesting link between avoiding litigation mm. and avoiding mess, right? There's a very interesting link between those two. Yep. Yep. Uh, there you go. Okay, and and so I guess one of the concepts you share in Times Up is all about um, you know binning the timesheets. Um, do you speak much around the subscription based uh, professional yes. services? Yes, yes, that's the uh, that's the whole book. And by the way, it's a very interesting book because yes. uh, uh, oh, you'd expect me to say that, but but it actually <laughs> is uh, because when we when we wrote uh, the Firm of the Future. Mm. And the, the interesting thing about the firm of the future, right? Two thousand and three, right? Mm. That, that written, uh, and I mean, Ben, we were even talking about floppy disks, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. But but uh. the whole concept of what we were talking about is is ex- pretty much exactly what's right today. It's just that there are different mechanisms for delivering that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so yes, the 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 the, the whole thing um, about this, as I said up front, is like how do you move to this subscription model? Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing about about the book is that um, uh, when the publisher says, "Well, of course, this is both of you," so we're going to sort of integrate what Paul says and what Ron says, and you know, and yeah. try and make it as you're both saying it. And Ron said, "No, not going to do that." <laughs> he said, "Because <laughs> where where Paul and I work best is where where Paul kind of sets the scene, as it yeah. were." And then uh, you know he might be doing like a keynote presentation, and 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 he says, and then I follow that. He said, "By the way, for any any uh, upcoming speaker, uh, mm. that is the worst thing you can do." Right. So he's really gracious about about all of that, but it but it really is interesting because it sort of sets the tone, and you go, oh, okay, 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 oh, okay, okay. Now there's a few things that you know, detailed stuff that I get into. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Ron is just a master of you know going like you know uh, inch wide, mile deep, and yep. uh, that's exactly what he does, and it, it's really cool. Yeah, I um, I was actually flicking through my Kindle version of Firm of the Future this morning, and uh, and just sort of looking at like, um, or reminding myself, I saw all my highlights from probably years ago. Yeah. Um, one of the things which is like again, it's it's relevant, just it's done in a different way. Um, was creating a university. You remember that yeah. that bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah, about sort of training other uh, training your sort of business clients or with a business community in your area, uh, but also for team as well. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I was like, geez, that's that we could still implement that now. Um, well, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that, that's, if you think about that, I'm so glad you highlighted that because that's yeah. exactly what you're doing in Inspire, right? That's exactly what you've been mm. doing. And that's one of the reasons why people look to what you've been doing in Inspire and say, wow, look at that. Mm. <laughs> it's like, it, it's a, it's a standout. And, and, and by the way, talking about that, uh, <laughs> The other thing that I, I, I talk about in, in the book, and, and I think uh, this may be an interesting alliteration. I really love alliterations. I love them. And, you know, like uh, uh, strings of words that sort of begin with the same letter kind of thing, right? Oh, yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I talk about is is uh, this whole thing of moving from standard. I used to call that ordinary, mm. but standard, you know, that's not standard accounting firm, 
standard to stand out mm. because you stand for mm. stand for something bigger than yourself and and and, and when that happens it's it, you know you create this amazing space where clients love you know they seek you out rather than you having to sort of push out ads and all that kind of stuff so you mm. move pushing to attracting which is which is kind of cool mm-hmm. um so you, you know it's, it's a great space for new people to come it's also you, you become a magnet for talent because people mm. just want to work for some place where there's meaning where there's purpose where there's something bigger than them right mm. and, and of course what happens is when those two things come together then what happens is people respect and refer you um as they become a part of what you do and so the whole thing sort of grows mm. nicely and what's also interesting is that they respect you and that's really interesting that whole thing around do they respect you mm. um, and then the referral thing is kind of interesting because guess who they refer they refer the you know the the, the people kind of like themselves and in order to do that and this is the interesting thing about the model the interesting thing about the model is you you cannot do that without vision. You cannot do that without culture mm. and all that sort of stuff, right? So we spend a fair bit of time talking about uh, why, not just why those things are important, but how those things are important. So every day you as the firm owner go in, mm. it's not, it's not, oh, God. <laughs> it's mm. like, I am so proud to be able to step into this place. Mm, and mm. that's that's just a different feeling yeah that, that feeling is worth everything you know it's yeah. like Jeff, jeffrey hollander who's is the founder of um seventh generation there is, they do sustainable um, cleaning products and all that kind of stuff and he, he says it this way he uses three sentences to say here are the three sentences they are each of one word okay mm. so, <laughs> so he says culture Full stop is full stop everything <laughs> yeah yep and it is right yeah and I'd, I'd love to sort of dive a bit deeper into it actually um and one of the one of the other things i remember um from reading earlier this morning um was that would you be proud of your son or your daughter coming to work for your firm right. uh, and and now having a son and two daughters uh, yes. i was like Whoa, that's uh, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and, and in terms of culture, it, like, it's a huge question. And by the way, you 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 can up you you can mm. up the importance of that question. Can I can I up the importance of it? Yes, uh, because that that's Brian, That's a beautiful question. And, mm, it is, and, and and that's not saying you know your two daughters or your or, or your son should be. You know, run an accounting firm. It's just mm. saying, would would you be proud if, if they came in? But there is a bigger question, and that bigger question was first asked on October the fifth last year mm. uh, by Paul Pullman, uh, who's the legendary founder of Unilever and, and now the chairman of the International Chamber of Commerce and mm. you know, the godfather of the of the Sustainable Development Goals. And in the uh, beginning of his book. Uh, uh, which is called uh, net positive. He he says this. Uh, he says, he said, "Let me just ask you a question, right?" Mm. And the question, such an important question, is: Is our world better off because your firm is in it? Mm. Oh. Mm. And, and then you can, as we as we do in the book, by the way, you can then sort of delve into that. So it's like. Um, you know, is your team better off because you're in it? Is, yep. is, you know, you can sort of you, you can you can play with that whole thing, mm. and you know, it just becomes um, a, a, a hopefully a, a, a joyful place to be. And then you know, you it, I mean, inspire, right? I I know, I just know that one of the things that you've been able to do is to. And the classic way of saying it is to let go, right? That's Mm. the classic way of saying it. But another way of saying it is where you're developing your people to the Mm. extent that you don't really need to be there to the extent that which you have to be. Yeah. It's like, 
Exactly, right? And that is so <laughs> tough to do, by the way, right? Because mm. you think it depends on you, but it actually doesn't. It's, it's like, <laughs> I remember uh, uh, Neil Walsh, and, and, and uh, I think he was the first guy to say that you should not measure your success by the number of followers you create. What you should measure your success by, if you wanted to measure it, is by the number of leaders you create. That's mm. the measure of leadership, right? Right there. Yep. Yep. Fantastic. It's so funny. I uh, I had that um, uh, over reaction of importance yesterday. I, I had a whole day meeting yesterday with a group of other business owners. And I um, afterwards, I rang my EA Glaze. She's awesome, by the way. And I said, yes, oh, she is. Yes. <laughs> how's, how's everything going? Nothing burned down? And she's like, no, Ben. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I could just not have made that call and uh, nothing would have happened. And um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> but it's tough, how... right? It, it, yeah. it, 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 well, it, it, let's just put it this way: it's not easy, right? But when no. you when you when you make the transition, I don't know anybody uh, who makes that transition who says, "I wish I'd have waited longer to do that." <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah, and and actually, it was on your suggestion that we um, uh, that that I look for an EA to to assist me. Yeah. Um, and that uh, just a heads up, that's come up to two years now since we hired Glaze, um, yes, and right. she's she's been fantastic. And uh, just want to thank you again for that uh, that nudge. And I agree, um, I, I did wait too long, and I had too many. I overanalyzed it, had all these weird feelings about it. But um, oh yeah, of course you did, because oh. that's what the training taught you to do, right? So yeah, yes, it's weird. You mean I'm not supposed to check my emails? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> anyway. Uh, cool. Uh, but jumping back to culture. So culture is such a weird word because I think it means different things to different people. But what I've heard, uh, especially over the last two years with the canning firms, is that they've really struggled with people and, and culture, um, you know, attracting, retaining, um, and, you know, um, making it a fun place to work. So how would you describe culture? Mm. Well, first of all, that that comment that you make, um, if you if if you go back and you you know institutes in, in the world, uh, they always conduct surveys of their members and they always say, you know, what's the number one problem? Mm. What's interesting, if you go back to all the studies, they almost all of them, all of them say attracting and keeping great people, right? So so yeah. so whilst the, the the pandemic and all those sorts of things might have been uh, you know might have amplified that it's not it's not something that's um, that's brand new it's always yep. been we interesting on, yeah um and you know your 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 question give me your question again ben because i was thinking of, i was thinking of some real implications of that so give me yeah. the question again make sure um, i answer the question Maybe, maybe I've actually further clarified it. So it's almost like attracting and retaining good people is the outcome of a good culture. But what's the lead indicators? Like, or, or not, um, like what are the steps we can take now to create a better out, outcome for culture? Yeah. Okay. No, okay. Well, first one is is to determine that that's the crucial thing, right? That that's that is the crucial thing. It, together with how well you sell things is also uh, one of the crucial things. And you just start that you, you just realize that engagement is a is a, a critical thing. And by mm. the way, you don't need timesheets to measure engagement. You know, mm. you know, right? You just look over, oh no, not engaged, right? You just know. <laughs> and the numbers, the numbers are seriously scary. And, yep. and and sadly they're getting worse, you know. So if you think about it as like like rowing a boat. So imagine there's a hundred of us rowing a boat, right? Yep. And hopefully we're all we're all rowing in the same direction, right? Mm. But what the numbers show is that something close to 68% just have their oars in the water, right? Then they're, they're, they're not even rowing, right? They're just, wow. Right? And something like 13%, this is the latest number in the US, uh, they, they have their oars in the water, but the problem is they're, row they're rowing the opposite way. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So, you know, how can you build anything, you know, that, that works like that? And so yeah. the first, first element is, funnily enough, the first element is an interesting thing, right? Um, uh, and and I've, by the way, I've, I've, I've kind of changed up my view on the crucial questions to ask. Mm. Um, 
um, and it particularly is important in the in the hiring process. It really is important um, because typically, uh, you know, and classically, we know what the studies say. We know mm. the studies say you hire for attitude and you train for skills. We know, yes. right? But that is very hard for us to do because you know you do need people who look after the numbers and everything else. I mean, they've got to be good at that. But I came across a really interesting way of, 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 of thinking about that, which actually helps in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And I, I came across it from a really weird source. This lady, her name, uh, her, her name is Tamsin Woolley Barker. It's one of those names you always remember. <laughs> and she was studying. This is, she was studying just very quickly. She was she's studying uh, uh, beings, if you like, uh, mm -hmm. that are older than ourselves, right? That have been around for a long time. Instance, termites, instance, ants, instance. Mm -hmm of these things and she asks interesting questions like for example how did you know in a termite mound mm. there's zillions of termites and yet they're able to build this perfect looking thing they're able to put the air conditioning in it and, and you know yeah. so what's, what's the management structure they use to do that <laughs> that's a really interesting question by the way and and she answers that question that's one of the reasons why tamsin is now one of in fact the leading change maker trainer in Silicon Valley because Google looked at her work and went, oh my God, we've got 130,000 people. I know that's not as many termites, but how do we get those people working the same way? Anyway, yeah. she's asked this question uh, and, and the answer, here's the question she's asked. And this, by the way, impacts more than culture. Right? Yeah. I'll explain how it you know, impacts in, in the... So someone says, so Tamsin, what's the biggest learning you've had? And she says this. She says, what I've learned is that nature does not solve for problems. Nature solves for potential. Now, just think about that for a minute, right? Mm. So let's think about that when we're talking to a potential client, as a, for example, right? So typically what we have these days, you know, you look at, you know, all of, all of the, stuff on this and say, well, you've got to have this thing called a discovery session. Right? Mm. And so mm. discovery session typically goes, so what sort of problems you got? Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. Oh, we have a solution. It's called this. Let's yep. do it. Yep. <laughs> but suppose you, you you just get this word potential locked in your head. And so so you're having this discussion and and yeah, they say, well, I've got this, I've got this. And, and you say something like this. Oh, that's interesting. What do you see, John or Sally, is the potential mm. of us fixing? And all of a sudden, they're, they're sort of future pacing. Does that, does that make sense? And, yep. and all of a sudden, you can start talking about the value that's going to create just by talking about the word potential. So mm. let's bring that into the issue of, of, of hiring people and mm. getting a great place to be so you could say something like you know typically we we look at their thing and we go oh yeah you've had this experience oh gosh you know that david's on the left on the right you know you know all of those sorts of things right by the way i may have got that the wrong way but anyway <laughs> <laughs> so you say one of the great things about this firm sally john is potential can i can i just explain what that means yes you can well mm -hmm. You told me about you know where you've been and, and, and where you are, but here we explore people's potential, potential mm -hmm. to grow, potential to do great things. So, with that in mind, what do you see as your potential in this firm? Now, just think about that because you're mm -hmm. not going to get all the stuff about where they've been and you know, everything else. You're going to get this whole thing, and mm -hmm. that becomes the start of. And you know this because this is what you do, right? That becomes the start of everybody realizing that in a sense, mm. it's no longer about me, it's about we and, and, and working together to build that culture because we are respecting everybody's potential. Mm. And it's that that drives the potential of the firm. Does that yep. make sense? Yeah, yep, I can see that. Um, like, I definitely think we can we can improve our own process there. But um, uh, like, I, I think the connection there is is with everybody driving everyone else's uh, potential in the firm. And um, one of the things I 
I've kind of reflected on is like we inspire is sort of built to continue growing. Um, and sometimes that gets tiring. Like there's, there's challenges with that. You need to level up and, and learn. And I often think, well, what, are, what would life look like not growing and, um, and just staying the same. Um, and I, I thought about that for a while and that, that freaks me out even more because, <laughs> Because then, then, then you've got team who, um, you know, don't necessarily see a, a development and growth. And, and, and if I didn't see that, then maybe I'd need to create that for myself or, or, or find another place that would facilitate uh, that personal and professional growth. Um, but, but also like, you know, meeting new clients and, and, and that sort of thing wouldn't happen in a, in a um, firm that might just stay the same. So um so I kind of went in this big loop searching for my own, um, you know, where I want to take this over, over time. And I said, well, I think the only option is to continue growing our people um, growing our, the number of families that we look after. Um, and, um, you know, while I may not have all the answers right now of what that looks like over 10 or 15, 20 years, um, I know that that's the direction we're going to go in and, um, and let's, yeah, let's do things to make that happen for people. Oh, that's 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 a great analogy, and I mean, classically, people would have said, but the way you just described it, then is so much better. Uh, <laughs> people would have said, well, if you you know if you switch off, then actually you're going backwards because there's there's no you know because not everybody else stays the same. Everybody else is moving forward. Yeah, so you're 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 moving backwards. But what you just said is is uh, it's it, it's it's just exactly exactly what we need to get and mm. and again to realize that the only way the only way you can do that is when you grow the people in there and mm. by the way and when you grow the clients as well that's yeah. the only way. <laughs> no, but it is right it is and and th this comes back to you know, this distinction between, and you do this very well in Inspire. You do this, but there's so many things you do very well. But one of them is you realize this fundamental, this fundamental point that, uh, you know, you're, those, those people listening to us right now, you know, you're, you've got to understand. Well, no, you don't have to understand, but it would be nice if you did. <laughs> that, that, that your income is a, a, a direct result of the outcomes mm. that you are producing for others, it's a it's a direct result of that, right? Yeah, and that's true whether you're thinking about your people or whether you're talking about your clients, right? And and I know that you believe that, and and that's mm. why you measure it. Mm. Um, and and by the way, not wishing to have a pun on the name inspire, but that inspires others to be mm. a part of it, right? Mm. So yeah, it, it becomes this this beautiful virtuous circle as opposed to you know a vicious circle right? yep yep absolutely and and while we talk about impact and um uh you know the f fantastic things around that um, you and i first met um when you uh, like i guess maybe in the first sort of five or so years of starting b1 g1 uh, yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, and that's what what a journey uh, that's been over the years that's um yeah and how many giving impacts uh, are you up to roughly at the moment Three, 302 million 302 million um but we we had uh which is you know you could never imagine i mean i come back i go wow well, it's like by the yeah. way i wish it was a bit less be, uh, well no, i'm only i'm only kidding Three, 302 <laughs> million was awesome but i remember when we crossed 250 million and i yes. can say it's a quarter of a billion because a quarter of a billion sounds a bit better uh. than but Ben, let me just let me just um, mention something. Mm. See, when you and I are talking about it, right? It's 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 like as if it's all smooth sailing, and yeah. and, and 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 you you know there are days, okay. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> um, sometimes there are ends of months, uh, or sometimes there are ends of quarters or sprints, right? You go, mm. oh my god, mm. what's happening here? What's happening? <laughs> And sometimes, sometimes that's like external circumstances, right? You know, like pandemics and things like that. Yeah. But let me let me just let me just say let me just say this because it's it, this has been funnily enough th th this morning, literally before our call, 
I, 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 I went through something. It was like a, a personal sort of family thing, but mm. I, but I went through something that is the exact um, thing I just want to talk about now. And, mm. and just, just very quickly, um, I was, uh, was in this uh, somewhat, uh, uh, you know, I, I feel like an imposter being in this group, but it's a group of 150 people. Um, and here I am in the, in the center of London at the Barbican. And I mean, seriously, when I say like, I'm feeling like an imposter mm -hmm. uh, on, on my right hand side, that particular morning is sitting Elon Musk's business partner uh, in Neuralink, you know, that whole Neuralink. Yeah, yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side, uh, on the other side is Sir David Attenborough's producer next to her, <laughs> next to her is, 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 is the, uh, uh, chief operating officer at the BBC, and next to her is M of MI6, right? Seriously, Sir, Sir Alex, right? Yeah. Um, wow. So, I don't know why you. I don't know why you, don't know why you feel. Gonna... No. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> anyway, this, this group is there to sort of solve, you know, interesting problems in the world, and mm. they always do it very well. The problem is we haven't been together for the last three years. We just haven't been able to. Mm. Um, so they always have this musical thing at the front of it. And there's this musical, which is specially commissioned. And it, it was, oh, you really needed to be there to feel it. But but it was just amazing. And you got this guy on a MacBook who's creating this and, and written this amazing piece. Hmm. And, and and it's only a tiny little theater. And there's, there's a cellist with these lovely bass notes going. And there's a, even a saxophone player. <laughs> and in the middle, in the middle, there's two ladies dressed in white. One is one is black and one is one, one is white. And I think they're going to be singers. So, yeah. so at some particular point, the lady, the, the white lady dressed in white, she uh, she opens her, like her singing voice, and she's doing this choral stuff, mm. which is amazing. You you feel like you're transported to a different place. And then the black lady steps forward, and I think she's going to sing, but she doesn't. She just speaks. Mm. And I realize now why she just speaks because i realized at the time hang on this is weird but it turns out she's a poet by the way mm -hmm. her name is sophia thakur you need to look at what she does anyway mm -hmm. here's this here's this specially written piece right the poet piece and mm -hmm. here's what she said fourth line remember now we're coming together because we haven't been able to get together for three years here's the line she says almost at this place have you ever noticed Actually, she didn't say it quite like that. I, I try and say the way she said. She said, "Have you ever noticed when things break, they open?" And I'm sitting wow. in there, I'm like, "Jesus, oh, that, that's like uh, that. That is like the best line I've heard for a long time." And mm. just after that, I I, I had the uh, the opportunity to just relate that story to someone whose business uh, they're in Toowoomba, mm. and their business has grown from like three million to close to twelve over the mm. last three years, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> and the owner of that business sitting it's a Zoom call, and he's sitting in Melbourne, and he's sitting on a forklift truck. He's got a yellow hat on and he's got yeah. a yellow safety thing. What, the, what this company does, by the way, is provide all of the service bays for people like BMW and all of that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so David is sitting on this thing and you can see that he's just he's just so frustrated. You just see. And and I, I say, oh, David, hi, good to see you. What, what's happening? He said, oh, geez, you know, I'm in bloody Melbourne here. It's cold and you know <laughs> Ukraine and everything else and that's disrupted the the supply chain and oh god i'm sitting on i can't even drive the forklift truck because i don't have a license and <laughs> so then i say to him have you ever noticed when things break they open and here's this 60 year old guy ben i kid you not mm. he's a 60 year old guy in this yellow jacket with the yellow helmet on on the on the forklift truck mm. and a tear comes out of his left eye mm. i'm holding them back <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. and then and he calls me two days later and he says oh that's the most profound thing 
And, and mm. he said, I realize that, yes, we've got all of these other issues, but there's other things that are broken, and that's why we've got the issues. Yeah. And then he said to me, Paul, if ever you tell that story again, let me give you another insight to it. And here's the other insight. Mm. And the other insight is that when things break, you cannot put them back together the same way mm. because it's that thing that made them break, if, mm. if, 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 if that makes sense. And, you know, when you think about what's happened, if you think about, for example, the pandemic and all the mm. things, I mean, that's that's like break. That's, mm. that's like really break, big time. Right? <laughs> and they open. So what are they open for? Mm. They open for you and, and, and your firm to, to realize that the potential of what you do is so huge. Yeah. Particularly when you you understand, as we said right up front, that th this is this is not a process. Yes, there are sort of processes that you've got to follow and all of that mm. sort of things, but fundamentally, it comes from that mindset. Mm. Uh, which, if to go back to Frederick Reicheld, says, so "Why are you here? And, mm. and you're really here to enrich lives." And I would add to that 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 there is no profession. And I'm, by the way, I'm saying this not to pander to anyone. It's something mm -hmm. that I genuinely believe that there is no profession like the accounting profession that so has the ability to do that, to mm -hmm. enrich lives beyond measure. And, 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 and just, just think about what happens when you do that. Just think mm -hmm. about Think about the ripple effect. Think about the ripple effect in, 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 in that owner's family. Think about that ripple effect in that community. Think about the ripple effect of all the people that person talks with. And then think about this. There has never been a more important time than, mm -hmm. than now where we actually need you to do that. We really need you to do that. Mm. Mm. And um, when we think of the ripple effects, um, one of the ways I, I see that you or B1G1 helps um, businesses do that is through the, the giving initiative that it is. Um, I, I'm certain that some listeners will know what B1G1 is and, and who you are. But for those who don't, how would you describe um, B1G1 to someone for the first time? Mm, well, again, it's interesting you mentioned that in the in the context of have you ever noticed when things break they open? Yes, <laughs> it's very clear. So here's how I uh, I would describe that now, but, uh, and it's this: what B one G one does. See, some people think you know it's it's all about you know charitable stuff and all that, but I, I mm. just want you to wipe wipe that. Mm. Because yes, I mean, the, the, there's that goes on, but B1G1 is is a, a, an initiative, and it's an impact-driven initiative. Mm. What it does is allows you in your firm to create more impact on your firm and in our world mm. than you could ever imagine. You know, let me give you a very simple example of that. Ben, I, I'm not sure whether people can see this or hear this, but you and I are on Zoom right now. Right? Yes. And, and so what B1G1 allows you to do is to take tiny, tiny, tiny little things, like for example, tiny instances, like, for example, being on Zoom, like, mm. for example, having a client meeting, like, for example, delivering the accounts on time, like, for example, finish, you know, all of these things that mm. go on every day, like having a great huddle, you know, or whatever it is. <laughs> And linking that, and in some cases, automatically linking that, just like I do on Zoom, to the fact that here we are on Zoom, and, and you know, thank you for making it possible, because just as a result of you and I being on Zoom, 11 kids got access to literally game-changing education for them. Now, next wow. week, it could be that you know, 13 people in need got access to life-saving water. The week after that, it could be something else. So you can change this up. Mm. And so, and again, that's also cent central to, uh, to the culture because you can remember what we said about moving from stand standard to stand out because you stand for. Yeah. And, and how about like, like Ben, for example, 
you know, you stand for making positive impacts in our world. And of course, what B1G1 allows you to do is to do that. But interestingly, not just through the words you use, mm. but by actually measuring those impacts. So you can, you know, count them up every day if you wish to, or you can use processes which we have where you can automatically, you know, like for example, you can, you know, link B1G1 with zero as a for example, and just, you know, just take a look at what's happening and zoom, up goes the giving or up goes the impacts like that. Yep. So, you know, I think it's a it's a brand new uh, way, even though we've been doing that for 15 mm. years, it's a it's it's a brand new way of thinking uh, uh, about what we do. Just as some of the things that you've elicited, Ben, from mm. our conversation this morning, it, it just you know little words and phrases that really massively impact. Be, because it's all. I mean, this is one of those things. Someone said to me, uh, a guy who's a B one German client in the in the US. His name is Jamil. And he's very big on his coaching is all about now, right? It's about mm. now. And what he says is, is this, do you realize there's no such thing as tomorrow? I said, what do you mean there's no such thing as tomorrow? He said, well, you can't reach out and touch it. It's, it's just a, a, a figment of what you're thinking about. And so really everything is just this, this and I know this is kind of like woo-woo stuff, but just think about it for the minute. Someone said that where we are at today is simply a result of all of our reactions to the moments, the moments in mm. our life. And that's why what you're doing, Ben, in, in the podcast is, is so important because hopefully today, as people have been listening, there have been particular moments like, oh, that's it. Right. And then as a result of those moments, then something happens. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. That's um that's extremely profound. <laughs> <laughs> but why well, well, I, I do not expect like any profile. less yes yep um and i guess to just to wrap up our um our chat this morning um what i'd love to know um given if, if there was uh if i was asked you'd be definitely in my top five uh but who are some of the thought leaders in the accounting profession um or maybe even that sit outside but are still really relevant for accountants um, that you follow well that's really i mean you mean other than ben walker that's what ah. <laughs> <laughs> well well uh, ben if you'd have asked me this question a week ago i've given you a different answer okay and um but now just particularly since you've said profound mm. uh, you are today's answer for that mm. and um Last week it was uh, we we had planned to go on like a Sunday date, you know, and we were going to a particular place and and it was pouring with rain and so we realised mm. we can't go to that particular place and so we're sitting in this coffee shop and oh we can't go, so we go have a look at the movies that are on so oh it's raining why don't we go and see a movie and we mm. see that there's this movie called Mission Joy, and then we go oh and there's no place to book it's not on anywhere. So then I look and I go, oh, it's on Amazon Prime. Why don't we go home and we can have a look at this movie because it sounds pretty good. I'll tell you why it's pretty good in a minute. And we get home and we get into Amazon Prime and it says not available in your area. <laughs> so, so then <laughs> we get this email from a boutique cinema uh, in uh, Singapore and it says showing this afternoon, selling fast. And this was at 1.40. And the thing starts at three. So you go, oh my God, let's book. And I get the last two seats and they're mm -hmm. in the front row. And I, you go, oh. Anyway, let me tell you what Mission Joy is all about. Mission Joy is it's, it's described as a conversation between two interesting people. Mm -hmm. And those two interesting people are the Dalai, the Dalai Lama, and Archbishop or the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Yeah, wow. Well. And, and when I mention that to you, you think, oh my God, this is going to be like all sort of woo woo stuff and, you yeah. know, it's holy this and, you know, da 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 da. It is anything but. It is the first time then I've been in a theater where the entire audience has stood up. This, and this doesn't happen in conservative Singapore, believe me, it doesn't. Mm. Uh, the entire audience has stood up and given a standing ovation to a movie. Wow. I've never yeah. seen that in my life. <laughs> no, exactly. And so if yeah. you can find it, yep. go find uh, Mission Joy. And, Wonderful. And 
Yeah, it's it, again, it, 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 you know, on the face of it, you don't go, oh, no, that's going to be woo woo. No, no. Yeah. You, you look at some of the issues that these guys have faced. Um, mm. And how did they deal with that? How the heck did they deal with that? How the heck did they deal with, you know, Mandela being 27 years in prison? How did how the mm. heck did they deal with that truth commission in South Africa? How the heck did they mm. deal with, you know, getting getting exiled and all that kind of stuff? Mm. Um, and how do we deal with those uh, things that are going on around us uh, as we speak? How do we deal with that? Yep. Um, so, you know, there, there's my uh, <laughs> there, there's my, my my change of view, and then mm. from last week, it's a, it's a really important thing to see. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for sharing that, and and also thank you for all that you've shared uh, today, including um, the the impact that we've had on the lives of eleven children with education. Thank you, and thank you for for holding the space. Uh, in in such a nice way who who could have thought that we would have a discussion which hasn't mentioned well not too much a debit and a credit and <laughs> and, and a balance sheet even yes. though actually i mean this really is just sort of this this is this is actually the building things that are in perfect balance mm. and that's what this is about and you're yeah. doing it very well congratulations man and thank, thank you for having Thanks so much, Paul. All righty. And uh, I look forward to catching up soon. Yes, hope so. <laughs> Catch you soon, Ben. Thank you. Bye.